In this episode of Business Success with Graham and Leanne Carling, we are travelling to Scottsdale, Arizona, where the couple are viewing a number of businesses for potential acquisition. We will be discussing the differences between purchasing a business in the USA and the UK, including how the finance can be structured. Not only will they be on the search for businesses, but Graham and Leanne will be catching up with their long-term friends, Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, a couple who are famous worldwide for their books and personal development seminars. You are watching Business Success. Graham and Leanne have been visiting Scottsdale for over 15 years and so have become familiar with the area. We joined Graham and Leanne at a house they are staying at for their visit to the area and we wanted to find out what was it that first brought them to Scottsdale. In 2002, I caught the tail end of my third failed business. Uh, I was in a bad place financially, personally. Ego, bruised, dented, uh, at a low ebb, really. And I remember catching the tail end of an Oprah Winfrey programme. And that was, and Oprah had, was interviewing a guy called Robert Kiyosaki, uh, who had just, uh, who had written a book called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I went and ordered a book, bought the book, read it, uh, completely loved it. It was a it was an epiphany, a light bulb moment for me personally. And I really, it really told me how much I did not know about finances and funding and how the advice that I'd been getting up to that point in my life was just wrong. It was simply wrong. And um, that was in 2002. And from 2002 up to when I quit my job in 2007, I read nearly every Rich Dad book. I really immersed myself in it. So for five years, it took me, if you like, to, to recover, to build up the confidence and the knowledge and have the emotional bank account and emotional uh, uh, capability to quit my job again and, and go back and to start my own business, which is something that I always wanted to do. So I quit my job in 2007. I didn't reduce uh, Leanne to Rich Dad. 2005, when 2005. we first met. So Graham bought me a Rich Woman as a gift. He'd left it on my desk at work. And um, I was like, what's this? Read it, loved it. And then Graham says, well, you know, um, Kim Kiyosaki's husband wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad and introduced me to the Rich Dad, Poor Dad books. And then we started playing the cash flow game um, and educating ourselves. And, and putting ourselves in a position that we could quit our jobs, and we actually both quit our jobs on the same day. So what happened was between 2002 and 2007, uh, reading the books, playing the games, I was a member of the Rich Dad website. Uh, they used to have a Tuesday morning meeting uh, here in, uh, at their offices in, in, in Scottsdale, and uh, I used to wait on it coming out. I remember being at my, my work and couldn't wait till it came out. I just loved it. I got into it. It made sense to me. It truly resonated with me. But I was back in mainstream employment at the time, but really hope, you know, hoping and looking to get back into running my own business. We, uh, we got married in August 2008. We came back from our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And this was right in the eye of the storm of the financial crash 2008. Uh, 2007-8. Now we'd quit our jobs already and started buying some properties. Mm -hmm. So we were active and in. Everyone was getting out of the property market. We were yeah. getting in because we were financially 
we'd been financially educated and financially aware and had put the work in and educated ourselves. I think that, you could say we were yeah. prepared. We were prepared, yeah. We were, we were prepared. Still terrifying, still to make the move. But we were, yeah, we were, we were prepared. prepared. But we had to take action. So, 2000, we went back from our, uh, got back from our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Then there was a seminar put on here in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, at the Scottsdale Plaza, and it was how to predict the future. Now, I didn't know, I'd never been to Arizona before. I hadn't read up anything about Arizona. I hadn't even thought about it. I just knew that I needed to be at this uh, seminar. So we just came back from our honeymoon, like I said. So I, I came across that first one on my own, and um, it blew my mind. It completely blew my mind. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I just knew that I needed to be there. I needed to connect with the guys over, over here at Rich Dad. And... Uh, it did, it totally, that seminar, and since then, we've been coming back twice a year, uh, every year, up to around 2015, 2014, 15, uh, twice a year or more. Uh, but coming here is always, it's always a special place for us because it did kickstart us, you know, the book, coming to the seminars, and uh, and it just, just it always gave us a, a all, real boost. I can always remember the phone call from Graham after the seminar, or after the first day of the seminar, you have to be here, I can't believe you're here. Because yeah. we always learn together and you know, we do everything together. Yeah. Um, you really need to go over. So I was in the next course. Yeah. Um, the next seminar. The next seminar, which was in the March, and we've been coming together ever since. So uh, brilliant coming back here, really. Uh, it's just a great place, a great place, a great place for us. It's got a great, great energy, it's got a great vibe. Great memories and really gives us inspiration every time we come back. It's clear that Scottsdale has been a large part of Graham and Leanne's lives, but we want to know what has brought them back on this occasion. Obviously we're, we're on a big acquisition spree in the UK, or a big acquisition, uh, we have big acquisition plans in the UK. We're looking for similar type businesses uh, across here in uh, Arizona. So building services and facilities management businesses that have government contracts uh, for three, four, five years, exactly the same. It's exactly the same setup here in the US uh, by state as it is in the UK. So the types of businesses that we're looking at in the UK, we're looking for uh, identical businesses. So again, uh, mainly uh, revenue over $5,000, that cash flow positive, that have good second tier management, uh, good base and good contracts. I think it's a great place to be to, 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 uh, you have to do business, to buy businesses, and we know the area well as also. So uh, we're here doing business, and uh, whilst we're here, we'll, 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 we'll see our friends now, Robert and Kim Kiyosaki. The couple have been doing research into potential acquisitions in the UK looking at suitable businesses that fit their portfolio requirements. They have chosen to view five businesses across the state. The business owners they are meeting today have requested to meet away from the main office, something that is not uncommon in this type of acquisition. Graham tells us more. What's the name of the place we're meeting at? We're meeting at McCormick, which is, uh, it's not where their offices are, but they, uh, they want to meet off site. Oh, okay. Obviously the staff are unaware that the business is for sale, so we'll meet them here today and um, we'll see how that goes. And depending on uh, you know, the outcome, the, the outcome we'll see if we like the likelihood the next step is we'll go up to the we'll go up to their, their offices okay. and uh, see the place. So but um, yeah, off site today McCormick. Here to do business is just so much easier. Mm -hmm. So these businesses that we're looking at you know, the whole concept of seller finance is straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's accepted. It's a standard principle when doing deals with uh, owners of businesses. The you know their their uh, cash flow, delayed considerations, EBIT, DA multiples, all of it is absolutely standard stuff. So if you take a a business broker back in the UK versus a business broker in the US. The information that you get is the the narrative is the same, but the numbers and context of within the, which the numbers are presented 
and the seller's understanding of the deal is just so much more easier, it's more advanced, and it, it's just way quicker to do a deal over mm -hmm. here, you know. Mm -hmm. The banks understand it, uh, they accept seller financing as a as a valid deposit, if you like, mm -hmm. although they still have the same issue in the US as they do the UK, where less than 10% of businesses listed for sale through a broker don't sell. Don't sell. Don't sell. It's a, it's a, it's a worldwide it's a phenomenon. It's just, it's just <laughs> what it is. And mm -hmm. the reality is, that's why you have to get directly to the seller, mm -hmm. uh, the motivated sellers, because most of them will simply turn the key. Mm -hmm. And how long, have, how long have the business, this business that we're going to see today, how they, long has that been on? They've had that for 22 years. I mean, the one the other day was 30. No, on oh, the, it's on the, market. on the market. No, this one's just recent. The other one was on the market for three years, isn't there? With a broker. And, yeah, and they're thinking of closing. You know, the one the other day. They're yes, thinking mm -hmm. of closing it. This one... I mean, is they closing is, it, closing the business closing down? Closing the business mm -hmm. down. You know, making everybody in place, turn the key. Mm -hmm. They're thinking of turning the key, and that's what happens. Coming up after the break... We find out if the business is one that is likely to become part of Graham and Leanne's portfolio, or if it simply wasn't for them. We also visit the home of Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, where the couple discuss business, investment and how to spot opportunities. Join us after the break. Before the break, we found out why Scottsdale has played a big part in the Carlings' life. We also followed the couple on their car trip to what could possibly be their first business acquisition in the USA. In this part of the program, we'll be finding out from the couple whether or not they see the business becoming part of their portfolio. We also visit the home of Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, where the couples discuss business, investment and how to spot opportunities. So we've just uh, been to see <clears throat> the owners of a business that's for sale here, uh, just in North West uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It's a building services and facilities management company. Uh, so it's it's uh, a business that we, we had an interest in remotely. We've just met the owners there and lovely couple have spent their whole life building this business to where it is now. Typical, uh, they've taken it as far as they as they believe they can. They're, They've, uh, there's been about 20 odd years of blood, sweat and tears put into this business and they're tired, you know, they've, they've, they've went, they're at the end of their uh, career path, they think now, they've taken it as far as they can, got some great staff, fantastic contracts, and in, in uh, particularly government style contracts, so it's exactly the type of business that uh, we had an interest in and even more so now after meeting them. Yep. Yeah, um, great business. And as Graham says, I think they, they said personally it's their baby and they've took it to as far as they can. Yeah. So it's something that we're really interested in. It's a type of, they're, they're the absolute perfect sellers as far as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. Motivated sellers. Uh, uh, both looking to retire. Yeah, both looking to retire. Prepared to stay on and uh, have a, 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 a sensible a re realistic uh, crossover mm -hmm. from uh, existing current ownership to, to a new owner, uh, understand the market, understand the structure of any potential sales deal, mm -hmm. have very realistic expectations in the in their asking price, mm -hmm. and um, I think, uh, and, and are keen to support and assist any potential buyers right. mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with a transaction, i.e. seller finance, they're open to seller financing the deal, uh, over a period of time, they are uh, keen that their, their staff remain employed with the business. So, so would we be? And uh, yeah, really, just yeah, absolutely, we have every intention. I would say we're really keen to take it further. Yeah, to take it further. Since attending a number of events run by Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, the couple have become good friends for over a decade. Whilst they were in the area, Robert and Kim invited them to their house to catch up. But who are Robert and Kim? Robert Kiyosaki is an American businessman, author, and is the founder of The Rich Dad Company, a private financial education company that provides personal finance and business education to people through books and videos. He is likely to be best known for his best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a book that is recognized to have changed the lives of thousands. His wife, Kim, is also an internationally renowned speaker, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and the author of Rich Woman. 
Well, it's uh, great seeing the two of you again. Um, it's been a while. Last time we yes. saw you was in London as well as in Scotland. And, uh, nice to have you out here once in Phoenix again at to our home. Yeah. So uh, what brings you out to Phoenix, Arizona this time? Well, uh, thanks very much for, for having us here yes. anyway. I think, Thank uh, you. It's great coming back to Scottsdale. Um, we are when here. was the last time you were here? It was, well, we, we were thinking that. We were here, I think it must have been six, six years ago. Okay. And we came for the real estate guys who were doing a seminar. And it was, uh, um, it was in Scottsdale, the Scottsdale Plaza. And we were here, we nipped into oh, the yeah, offices. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, it was in February, I think, a February mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. We went to the Richard offices and we bumped into a few, a few of the staff. It was great seeing, seeing the guys. So that was about six years ago, I think it was. Uh, se secrets to successful syndication was the, was <laughs> the, was okay. the event. So okay. it was good. So that was a few years ago, but it's great being back here. Mm -hmm. How many times have you come back and forth from Scotland to here? We have been coming. Well, when we first, the first ever se uh, seminar we came to together, uh, was uh, how to predict the future in 2008 and we came back a minimum of twice a year right up to 2014 a mm -hmm. minimum when the when you were holding the events uh for you guys <laughs> twice and, uh, a year twice a year twice a couple of events minimum Just or more events. anything you had an event yeah, we came across was, anything was something you guys were committed yeah <laughs> well, i have to ask this what did your friends say when you know why are you that's expensive it's a yeah. lot mm -hmm. of time it's yeah. a lot of money yeah Time and money, yeah. and you come all the way out here. Yeah. Why? Has it paid off? Well, it's paid off for us, but uh, yeah, they thought we were crazy. <laughs> you know, crazy coming across. Uh, what's what are you guys I can doing? I can remember one friend saying, "You've spent more on traveling for your education than I did my wedding." And she did at her wedding. Uh -huh. <laughs> she did her wedding. Yeah. Well, that's a different priority. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. She should have traveled for business. Yeah. <laughs> So, but they, they couldn't believe the amount of time and money we invested in ourselves in education. But it was, I mean, it absolutely worked for us, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, we loved it. We loved coming here, the excitement, even getting off the flight uh, at Phoenix Airport. Mm -hmm. And there was always, we'd always set ourselves a target that before the next event, we had to have done more property deals. We, there was no way we were going to come and you were still just haven't done anything. Haven't done anything. So, so when you started coming to our events, did you have a business or did you have property? We didn't have anything mm. really. We we bought a couple of properties, I think, by the time we came. We bought our first property in March two thousand eight, and we came. I think it was September October okay. uh, for 2008. two thousand eight. So we had a we had a few, but um, it really the you know coming here just gave us. Uh, I think you talked about impending events, Kim. Every time there was, you know, there was going to be another uh, event on here. They made us pull our stocks it, up. It, you know, it kept <laughs> us going, kept us going. So it was great for, for you know, twice a year. They were really kind of landmarks, I think, mm -hmm. for us. And did you read Rich Dad Poor Dad first? Yep. Yep. So, and the cash flow board game you played? Yeah, we played mm -hmm. all, we played all them. So it was 2002 when I played, when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. And I just lost, I think it was my third failed business. You know, I was licking my wounds, no money. Um, you know, just in a bad place, really. Read Rich Dad Poor Dad, then I read pretty much everything I could after that. And I was back in mainstream employment at the time. And I remember being a subscriber to Insiders on the, on the internet, and the Tuesday morning meetings, and that's why I was asking you earlier. The Tuesday morning meetings, I couldn't wait till they came out. I couldn't remember when they came out. It was either you know, the Wednesday or something in the UK, but I used to watch it re religiously. So I think when, the, when the, by the time the crash came in 2007, you know, we were prepared. I bought Leanne, mm -hmm. well, she'll well, probably. <laughs> I think I told you this before, the first gift that Graham bought me was your book, Kim, oh, okay. um, Rich Woman. Rich uh -huh. um, and I was like, this is great. When mm -hmm. I got at first, what is this? You know, intrigued and read it and loved it. And then started reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. Um, and all the books, and we started yeah. running cash flow clubs ourselves, and mm -hmm. that's right. You were running cash flow clubs. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and they were the cash flow clubs uh, at the time were great. You know, great. Mm -hmm. We still play cash flow with our kids on a Wednesday. I remember, mm -hmm. it was cash flow Wednesday. You know, we, <laughs> we, did that. we still do that now. And, mm -hmm. You still learn every time you play, right? Yeah, still, of course. Yeah, still, they're still cheating and. <laughs> 
but it's uh, for us. It's kind. It's, mm-hmm. it's um, they're at a good yeah, age actually now. Good age for, for it. Yeah. How, how old are they now? Uh, well, twelve and nine. Yeah, twelve and nine. Oh, okay, that's yeah. great age. Great age. So, so they're yeah. doing, we're uh, getting back in touch with all the cash flow clubs yeah. all over the world now, yeah. which is going to be fun. We'll talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're glad you. We're glad you're out here because uh, it's, your timing is perfect. <laughs> yes. Because we're. Kim, is, Kim and I are restarting the Rich Dad Company one more time. We had some, let's say, some management challenges as every business goes through. And now we're, we're growing faster than ever again. But um, I still remember what I was most impressed about going to Scotland. And I think this is the lesson for every entrepreneur, every investor, was that church. And you guys had this church. And, how old was that? Was it the Church of England or something? Oh, the Church of Scotland. The Church, Church of Scotland. Scotland. Church of Scotland. Oh, what year was it? It was a well, few hundred know. years old anyway. Mm-hmm. Hundreds years old. Years old yeah, right? hundreds, yeah. So, yeah, and uh, we'd, we'd agree to buy that church, but... You said you would walk by it every day. We did. Every day. But you never saw it as an investment opportunity. Well, no. we, we see that it, the plan, it had already uh, had planning permission granted mm-hmm. for it. But it was for like high end housing. I couldn't work that out. You know, it was in a, the, a low end low community. Income area. It didn't make any sense. But then all of a sudden, that the Scottish government were giving out some money to do these types of projects, then it made sense because you can you can convert them and sell them or rent them uh, as we would have done mm-hmm. uh, at affordable levels. So you were going to take a church, the Church of Scotland, and yeah. turn it into condos or yeah. apartments? Apartments. apartments. Yeah. Apartments. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, this is this is the part that just the reason I love that project. I know it burned down <laughs> before you guys bought it. Thank God. But why, the reason I love that project, I remember walking to it and going, "That's a beautiful old church. You know, it's beautiful. All the old rock work and the walls and the property and the forest and all this. And my God!" But what really impressed me was there was this for sale sign in front of it, and I could see people. Er, he yeah. said every morning people would just walk past it. Yeah. And I think this is the lesson I think I, I got the most from you guys was that most people are walking past millions of dollars of opportunity because they don't have a quote unquote financial education yeah. to see opportunities. Mm-hmm. It's millions, you know, people complain, I don't have any money, the economy's bad, you know, all this stuff, real estate's down. But I remember standing there with you guys, looking at this for sale sign, this old church, and hundreds of people walking past it, and they all could get rich, but they can't see it, because in their heads, they've been told, go to school and get a job. So they're walking to their job, and they miss millions of dollars in opportunity every single day. And that's what I remember most about that project. Too bad it burned down, before, and thank God it did before you bought it. But that's a good that's a good point because more opportunities today than ever before, and people are complaining. Well, and, and to your point, it's people saw a church, they saw a church, and they think that's what it's I saw. a church. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the church? But but you took your you're looking at it from a different point of view to say, hey, what if we did this? You ask the question. It's like rich dad poor dad. You know, don't say I can't afford it. Say how can I afford it? So you ask yourselves the question: How could we how could we make this work? Yeah. And then what you told me was the government was offering all this money for you to fix it anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, all, so not only were people walking past saying, well, I don't have any money, so I got to go to work. Here's, here's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Church of Scotland. The government's giving you money. There's a for sale sign. And for two years, people walk past it. And I think that's the story of life all over the world. I mean, you know, Kim and I love real estate. I would, I would have loved to bought that church. But I didn't see what you saw. Does it make sense? You know, I saw a church. Yeah. yeah. So, so what are you guys working on today? Well, we're we're still heavily involved in the residential yeah. real estate, and we've really scaled that up now. So we don't we don't do sort of single properties or anything like that. Now. Right. It's really for larger projects and government funded, you know, so mm-hmm. it, still it, government funded, so yeah. government Good. funded, there's money there. I, we should move to Scotland. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's, there's plenty of money. You're giving money away. <laughs> yes, so we're doing that, but our, our other businesses, which has really taken off uh, in the last 12 months is we're buying sort of building services and facilities management which companies. 
building services. So it's not construction, but looking after buildings and mm. refurbishing them. So we'll refurbish it. So we won't build from the ground up, but we'll refurbish buildings, mainly for contracts for the government or housing associations, mm -hmm. low-income family housing, where the money is again funded through the government. So we bought a company um, out of administration last year and uh, we bought another one just before Christmas and we've got another four or five in the pipeline for the first half of this year. And they're all um, similar type businesses, uh, building yeah. services, facilities management with government contracts. Oh. So, mm -hmm. um, so the real, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a different, it's a different. So the, what happens though is once you get started, there's more and more opportunity, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. And those people are still walking past the church today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for a job, I want a paycheck. And, it's, and the more, the smarter you get, the more opportunity there is, right? Yeah. Have you had hard times? Oh, we've had yes. hard times. We've had many hard times. Yes. And that's what they don't want. They, they rather have the job. You've never lost any money, though, right? <laughs> no. Never. <laughs> never made a mistake. No, I never made a mistake. No, no, yeah. But you know, the, your your church in Scotland yeah. is what's your best deal ever? My best deal ever is a fitness club right here. We're doing the same thing. Her best investment, we drive past it every morning. Every day. Every day. And so 20 years ago, we're driving, you know, and, and she goes, oh my God, it's for sale. So what did you do? Well, I had been looking at another property in Florida, okay. and it was a fitness, a fitness club. club. Okay. And it was in Florida, and it was my biggest deal. And I, the bottom line is I got scared. Okay. I brought in attorneys from Phoenix attorneys to look at Florida property, which made no sense because they'd had no idea what was going on in there. I was just, it was just me in my own way. I was in my own way. And finally the seller said, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to, I'm taking it back. This is too hard. And, and this, this fitness club was right at the edge of Trump's property, yeah, Durrell Country Club. Durrell, yep. And, and, the, and, and the guy that was negotiating was out of France. So it was this big deal. And Kim was struggling with it. You know, it was a huge multi-million dollar deal. But what happened after you lost it? You lost well, it because you took too long to I close it, right? I took too long. And it was, Anal again, it was just Analysis fear. paralysis. <laughs> it, was just, it was just fear of making mistakes and losing money and all that same old crap. Um, so when I lost it, I mean, I'm on the phone with the owner. The, like, it's 10 o'clock at night here. Robert was out of town. And, and he says, we're, I'm not, I'm not gonna, we're not going to do this deal. And I was You know so why? Because they think we're amateurs, which we are because we're taking too much time, asking too many stupid yeah. questions, yeah, bringing true. in too many attorneys, it's just yeah. making the deal worse. Yeah, you know? it was. Um, and then, I, so I got off the phone and I was just so mad. I was so, and first I was mad at him, and then I was mad at the attorney, and then I was like, no, Kim, it's, it's here. Yeah, I'm mad at me. Yeah. And I, at, I, I put the phone down and I'm like ranting and raving, and I'm, on my desk is a stack of deals that had come across that I didn't have any time for because I was working on this one. Um, and here on the top was another fitness club. And same, same, uh, same, what call franchise. Same franchise. Instead of Florida, on it's your three set. blocks down. It's less money, better cash flow. And I called the broker, who's a friend of ours, and I said, is this property still on the market? And he said, well, actually, it's never been on the market, but they will entertain offers. I don't know if they still are. I said, call them. And he calls me the next morning. He goes, they, they will entertain an offer. And I said, what are they asking? And they, he said, 7.2 million. I said, what's it worth? He said, 7.5 million. I said, tell them we'll take 7.2, we'll close in 30 days. And he's like, what? I said, I know everything about this fitness club. <laughs> I know so much about fitness clubs. Oh, and so, sure enough, uh, we did that deal and it's been our best performance. Well, well this, is, this is the worst part about it because I cannot stop that the small, yeah, you know, I like business more than, you know, I love, I love real estate, but she's better at real estate. So I kind of, you know, she was doing her own little projects and all this. And then suddenly we go to the closing, you know, at the attorney's office. And here's my little sweetheart, Kim, sitting there like this. <laughs> got all these attorneys around. They got stacks of bankers boxes. I said, you know, if you play the cash flow game, the small deals and big deal, yep. this was a big deal. I went, Holy mackerel, there she is just signing away. And I think that's where most he's people- He's like, what, are, what did you do? <laughs> so what, what are we doing? Because I didn't know, you know. But most people don't even get there because they're walking past the church, they're walking past the fitness club, they're on their way to work. So 
And she signed this deal about 20 years ago. She said, now it's free and clear. That was the business, we had a business plan on it. We would amortize it in 17 years, which means she made 50,000 a month, positive cash flow. So most people don't make 50,000 a year. She's making 50,000 a month. She borrowed the money to buy it. So she's making 50,000 a month. And she just recently redeveloped the whole deal. It's now a $120 million deal, same property. They're gonna tear the sports club down and they're gonna put up old age assisted living on one of the most expensive corners in Phoenix. And this property is a nine iron shot from here. That's how close it is. And you know the trend today with all the baby boomers yes. aging, getting older and older, it's like the perfect time for the perfect product in the perfect location. So do you have a team, do you have a team now? We do, yeah. I mean, we have, uh, again, our team has, has obviously evolved over the yeah, years. It will. As, as it it will. Yeah. And some, some of the as areas, you get smarter, your advisors get smarter, right? Yes. You know, yeah. they get more expensive as well. Yeah, they get more expensive, <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, actually, that, that's, that's good. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we only use, really, we, we, oh, oh, since we started, I mean, we use top, the top four advisors on, you know, for, for the accountancy, we, we, they're hugely expensive, but they keep us right. Mm -hmm. And similarly with the uh, legal guys, mm -hmm. you know, we use the number one firm in, in, in Europe now and our legal advisors because we've we've tried it the other way. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. just, it costs yeah. us more. Oh and, yes, and, yes, and I, I, it costs us more. It costs yeah. us you know, more. Yeah. when you don't use when you don't use good advice. advice. Yeah. yeah, and I I don't think most people can understand that until they've been through it. Yes, because I think we've all done it the same way. We've all started with cheaper advisors, and it costs costs us more money, and we they've made mistakes and. Um, oh God. Yeah. Don't. Yes. So we've only you, you only learn. I don't. I think you have to learn that yeah. through a process to, that you got to pay for the best. Mm -hmm. and I think I think be. this is the best story of all. You know, because we talk about business and investing being team sports. Yeah. And in school, people are taught to do it on your own. You know what I mean? You have to be the smartest one. Well, I definitely wasn't the smartest one. Kim was, but I wasn't. I was right. not. <laughs> but anyway, this is what it looks like for professional entrepreneurs and investors. It's Kim and I, and then there's one person that's called the bookkeeper. Yeah. You've got to have a bookkeeper. Yeah. People say, well, I got QuickBooks. No, no, you have to have a bookkeeper because your advisor is your teacher. They're going to talk to you and scold you. Yeah. Then you have this bookkeeper, then you have your accountant, and then you have the attorney. And so, oh, I can't afford that. And that's why they don't get there. But it's start. Betty, the bookkeeper, was the cheap, the, the least expensive advisor we had, but she was great because she was a B I T C H. <laughs> and and without Betty, we'd still be poor because she fought with us. Oh, she well, she fought with us. Number one, she she gave us the truth about where we were financially. Yeah. And when when we started with Betty, we had more money going out than was coming in, and I had and, to sit down had, with her. We, we had hundreds of thousands in past debt from past businesses. Yeah. So we were in serious financial trouble and Betty was this B-I-T-C-H. And know? she would sit there twice a month with us and she'd say, these are your numbers, this is where you're at. Because most people, they, they trick themselves yeah. into- They uh, like, lie I to yeah, themselves. I don't spend that much on entertainment. I don't spend that much on you know, my, my foods and things on my clothes and I don't spend that much and, and I have more money coming in. And, and there, there's like gross, and then there's, they forget about taxes and all of this stuff. So the Betty, the bookkeeper, is the one that shows you the reality of here's where you are. Yeah. The and, real picture. Yeah, yeah. And well, Leanne, get this. Kim would say, so let's say we owe 10,000 that month, and we have 3,000 coming in. So we're going to shortfall of seven, right, let's say, a month. And that's a pretty real number. So we're in serious trouble. So Kim would say, well, we've got three coming in. I'm going to take 10% right off the top. 30. You 30, 30%. 30%. That's right. Oh, yeah. We took 30%. So she would, how much is that? That's 9,000, $900. $900. So we, that was our Wait, rule. So, so Betty would go nuts. She says, you can't take that money. You can't take that money. She, what are you going to do with that money? Kim says, well, what would you do with 30%? So our rule was with every dollar bill that came into our household, we, we took 30% off the top. 10% went into a savings account for emergencies, things like that. 10% went into an investment account, and 10% went into charity or tithing account. Um, and the most important was the investing account, because that's our future. And it was amazing how fast that money would add up 
but Betty was having kittens. <laughs> she goes, but you still owe seven thousand dollars a month. And I How said, are we going to pay all the creditors? How are we going to pay everybody? And this is where being an entrepreneur pays off because the only way we're going to get that money was not sit and complain and have a scotch. You know, the only way we're going to get that money is go out and hustle for a few more dollars. So I learned what's called being a rolling stone. We would just keep going out, making more money, making more money to make up for that shortfall. And that's how we got rich. We kept, we kept earning more money to pay that $7,000 and taking 30% off the top. But had we sat there, we would have gone broke. Well, anyway, talking about scotch, thank you for the beautiful McLannans. I, I love that stuff. I love scotch. I'm not an addict, but I love the scotch. <laughs> it's my favorite drink. Anyway. So let's, let's, go, let's go have a scotch and let's go look at the house. Thank Great. you. Thank All right. You. Thanks. Thanks. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. Thank you. It's clear that despite the fact that the couples are geographically very far apart, the views they share on business, investment, and grasping opportunity are very close. But we wanted to find out from Graham and Leanne where they see the biggest differences between the mindsets and business practices of those living in the UK compared to those living in the USA. So we see quite significant differences in the US market when it comes to commerce and business and real estate in comparison to the UK market. Uh, the, it's far easier to do business over here. I think the the, if we take the real estate, for example, multifamily real estate in the US is big, big business. And it's a way more mature market than it is in the UK. It's only started in the last sort of five years to really start to make any real impact in the UK uh, through the new PRS or build to rent schemes. So there's still a, there's still a long way to go in terms of the, the real commercial understanding of that sector. So, you know, from you know, how the, how the investments are looked at, the grading of the risk of the investments. All of that is changing, but it's slow. So we want to make sure, uh, so when we're doing business over here, what we, it, it's already there. They understand that they're more advanced. You're having conversations uh, on, on a real commercial basis, even though it's residential real estate. Yep. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And similar with the businesses, the, when you're dealing with the sellers, the concept of seller finance, for example, is almost alien in the UK. It's alien to the seller, it's alien to the banks, it's alien to any other financial funders that uh, may want to be part of the, the, uh, the finance structure of a deal. So, for example, if, we're, if a seller here is prepared to... Uh, finance 50% of my purchase price of that business, the bank will lend 50% pretty easily on the other remaining 50 because it's a kind of a, it's a no-brainer deal if the numbers work. But in the UK, the bank will discount that 50% uh, of the seller funding on a, on a lot of occasions, not every occasion, but most of the occasions, they will discount the 50% being financed from the seller and uh, make the purchase price, you know, the 50% level. So we've then got to come up, they'll only loan a certain percentage of the purchase price, as opposed to having the ability to fully fund it through uh, seller finance and commercial debt funding. So it's, it's just an easier, it's an easier transaction when you're doing it from a financial perspective. And that's just one example do, of the they, differences. They yeah. do advertise seller finance here when they put their their business yep. for sale. Yep. So so there's a there's a completely different mentality, more mature mentality when it comes to the finance, uh, from the actual business owner. They're aware of these types of transactions. In the UK, we are having to not only convince the banks, but you're having to convince the seller of this transaction and therein lies the issues and therein lies the, the big differences in terms of ease of uh, ease of acquisitions and, and ease of funding, which ultimately what all mainly boils down to if the numbers work. That's it for this programme, but tune in next time for Business Success with Graham and Leanne Carling.